worthy, isn't he? Hallelujah. Why don't you look around and if you can, bump about three fists and say, worthy is his name. Is your name Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go with me to Hebrews chapter number 12. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 12. Praise his name. Hebrews chapter number 12. Here's what he said. Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight yes, and the sin with that which doth so easily beset us and let us run this race or with patience the race that is set before us. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin. Notice he put weight there before the word sin. There are some things that may not be a sin, but it's a weight and can hold us back from what God has. Amen. You can be seated. Praise his holy name. Amen. I'm going to page number 180. I'm going to sing an old song today. Amen. If you know it, you can sing it. Everybody will be happy. I think it's in G according to this thing. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond where the saved of earth shall soon the glory share where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore everybody will be happy over there sing it with me oh everybody of all ages will join in the triumph song. Everybody will be happy over there. Oh, everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. Oh, we will shout and sing His praise. Everybody will be happy over there. Come on, sing it.
Some over there, nobody sad over there, nobody mourning over there. Come on, somebody. No more burden bearing over there. Hallelujah. We'll be dancing around the throne of God, singing praises unto Him. Well, everybody will be happy. Oh, we'll be happy. Oh, Everybody will be happy over Oh, there. let's do it again. Oh, and everybody will be happy. We'll be happy over there. Oh, we will shout and sing his praise. Everybody will be happy over holy name. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. My blessed God. When you think about that, it just makes you happy. Hallelujah. No sickness, no disease, no affliction, and the greatest thing is no devil. No more paying taxes. No more government. The only government that will be there will be his. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to help me. Glory to God. No politics. Amen. Somebody help me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a time that's going to be. Amen. My blessed God. Isn't the Lord good? Look at your neighbor and say, the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12 and 1, the Bible tells, tells us here to lay aside every weight. And then he says, and the sin that does so easily beset us. This race is the lifelong test of faith that we experience during our time in the world. Then he says, let us run with patience. <laughs> I thought patience. How many in here has got patience? How many in here's how many in here's got them? If you if you'll be honest about it, how many's got patience? Okay. How many your patience is not really all that good. See, that's the part, that's the first part of being free. <laughs> Is admitting it. Somebody help me say. But that word patience there means endurance. <laughs> you know, I, I was thinking this week, and, and I don't know about you, maybe you don't have this problem. Maybe, maybe I'm preaching to me. You ever walked into a space, a room, a closet, a building? Say, man, alive. How in the world can somebody collect so much junk? I read an, I read an article this week. And it says the average household has 300,000 items in it. Yeah. 
300,000, how many of you think yours has got that? I see men looking at their wives. I see wives looking at their husbands. I see it. You know, if, 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 you, if you get to thinking about it, you know, you got your toothbrush, your toothpaste, your dental floss, and I'm talking all these items, 300,000. All right? Now watch this. All the stuff in your building, your closet, all the shoes. Hello, somebody. If you're like my wife, she says, I have more shoes than she does. Hallelujah. <laughs> does anybody have anything you need her to do in the back right quick? <laughs> but when you get all these items, you know, just like I read this week where that the average person, experts estimate the average person makes 35,000 decisions a day. Well, let's calculate just a few of them. When am I going to get up out of the bed? How many times am I going to hit the snooze button? Right? That's two decisions right there. Am I going to hit it a third time? Am I going to hit it a fourth time? You done got four decisions before you even got out of the bed. What shoes am I going to wear? What socks? What dress? What pair of pants? What shirt? And it's going to be long sleeve or short sleeve. So when, if you really think about it, the more you think about it, it makes it very uh, sensible that we make 35 on average, on average. And then it makes sense that we have around 300,000 items in our house. What nots? Don't touch us. Don't touch that. Hello? Dishes, spoons, forks, knives. Chairs, tables, you just name it. And if you ever look through your home and, and your vehicle and your storage area and your units, I never in a million years, David, dreamed that storage units would be a classic. But they're building them like, I mean, even in King, it's amazing. I said, I asked my wife one day, I said, is there really that much business? in storage units but we're collecting so much we don't even have room at home oh I'm going somewhere and all the stuff and you you find that it piles up I, me and Papa was talking one day I said I never dreamed somebody could collect so much junk 30 years worth hello 10 years whatever cluttered that's the word I think about cluttered stuff when you go into a building brother David or you go into your closet and you begin to look and pull stuff out you oh I forgot all about that I just bought something that resembles that and I forgot all about that I already had one anybody ever done that stuff that you hadn't even taken the tags off of clothes that you bought and you forgot all about. You, anybody ever done that stuff or is it just me? Am I talking to me? You think, oh, I still got the tag on it. And then you have to make a decision. Well, am I going to keep it? Or maybe if I lose. <laughs> X number of pounds. <laughs> I, I might better get into that. So I'll just keep it. Isn't it amazing? We have so much stuff that you can't even put anything else in that particular area because of stuff you've already got. I can't put anything else in it. And our lives are the same way. We have so much emotion, so many feelings, and such that we don't have room for God because we've piled up all this stuff that we have no business holding on to. I'm preaching. The writer here tells us to lay aside every weight. And I believe today 
that that weight is things that we're holding on to like we do in our closets because we think we might use it later on. Somebody told me, honestly, they told me, and I've never thought of that like this, but they said if you've not used it in a year, <laughs> then you probably don't need it. Can I tell you something? There are things in our life that we're holding on to and there's no wonder why God can't do but so much in our life because we're holding on to past hurts and past emotions and past feelings and it's piling up and piling up and then, then we, we, we don't have enough room for God. Can I tell you that clutter increases stress levels according to the University of UCLA? No wonder why the people of God were so stressed out because we're holding on to things that we were never meant to hold on to. We, our mind is bombarded. We're still holding on to feelings and past hurts and like I said a moment ago, things that, that we have no business holding on and we just need to give it to the Lord. Are you listening? I don't know about you, but in, even in, in the last few months, I've been going through my house and I, oh, let me just take about 20 minutes. It's amazing what you can do in 20 minutes. This has got to go. I'm going to put that right here. But this has got to go. That's got to go. This has got to go. You know, I was going through my, 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 my papers the other day. Anybody, if you just file papers, you know. And, and, and I found papers, Sister Debbie, from 1999. <laughs> Cars I'd previous owned. I don't even have them. I don't even have them anymore. But I had all of the oil changes and all that sort of thing. And I thought, you know, it's ridiculous because look at all this stuff, all this space that all this stuff is taken up. You know what I started doing? File 13. Let's go and let's get it in the, in, the, in, in the shredder. Can I tell you something? There are things in our life that we need to give to the spiritual shredder and say, look, I, 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 that, that's past. That's, that's gone. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Help me today. Take one day at a time. Okay, our lives, as I said a moment ago, clutter, you know, it brings chaos. Clutter, mess brings stress. When stuff is out, is, is out uh, of place, it creates a whole lot of hassle. You ever notice that? Clutter brings confusion. Clutter brings conflict. Your mind wanders. Researchers, in fact, have found that being around disorganization makes it harder for your brain to focus. Clutter brings disorder. Too much stuff makes it harder to keep your space clean. It's time to declutter. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to declutter. Decluttering, I'm a, it's going to be a little humorous today, some things I'm going to say, but I believe it, it, it's relative and relevant to us today. But decluttering, they say that it makes it easier to dust and to vacuum and get symptoms like sneezing, wheezing, and itching eyes under control. It's amazing. Does, clutter brings disaster. They say that a, night and t a neat and tidy house feels inviting, both for the people who live there as well as guests. But a cluttered home may feel the opposite. Watch this. Clutter and living with it puts you at risk of getting injured. We're walking around with hard feelings toward people, and all we're doing is causing ourselves problems. We're holding on to that weight of well, so-and-so did that to me 20 years ago, and I still can't stand them today. I still got hard feelings, and my mind is cluttered. If I could just see them one time, I'd slap them silly. And we're holding on to things, and God is saying, listen, I'm coming. 
I'm coming. Do you believe the Lord's coming? Do you believe that Jesus is coming? Do you believe it could be at any moment, at any hour, at any day, any second, any moment? Are you listening? And he's wanting us to just let it go. Let it go. We got to let some things go. We got to let some clutter in our spiritual minds because no wonder we can't focus on God because we're still holding on to what so-and-so did. We're tripping over things, so to speak, spiritually that we shouldn't be tripping over because we're holding on to things we have no business holding on to. Our minds are cluttered. Our person is cluttered. Our emotions are cluttered. And clutter can make us feel stressed and anxious and depressed. In fact, it can affect your memory. Our brain, watch this, is wired to be able to keep track of only a few details at once. Now, if you're like me, it may be shorter. But it can become overloaded. And what I want to say today is when I thought about cluttered areas you know makes it more difficult for room for other things in fact when I thought about the benefits of decluttering number one you find items that you forgot all about can I tell you that if we begin to declutter our spiritual being and our, and our physical being of feelings and hard emotions, then we would find that it would make more room for God. See, here's the deal. It's just like our rooms at home or our room in the car. It's, it's going to be occupied with something. And if you're putting things there that should not be there, then it's not going to make room for things that could be there. And we're holding on to all of these emotions and all of these weights and all of these sins, if you will. And we wonder why we can't feel God like we used to. And we wonder why, you know, we're not spending time with God like we used to because now we're preoccupied with everything else other than the very most important thing in our life. He said, love the Lord your God and him only shalt thou serve. Can I tell you, he must be number one in our life. If he's not, then there's something else will take its place. I thought, you know, I can't get nothing else in this closet. What do I need this with? I ain't used that. I might as well get rid of it. And so over the course of the last six months to a year, I've been going through room after room after room after room, even in my office at home. I said, my blessing, I've got papers, I've got magazines, uh, uh, gospel magazines from 25 years ago. What do I still need them for? I'm cleaning out drawers. Going into my laundry room. Well, I don't need this, this, this. They said, are you serious? I'm absolutely serious because I said, my blessing, if I ever have to move out of this house, how long will it take me? I've got all this stuff. Yeah. We need to do that with ourselves. Our spiritual being. God wants to be number one. And oftentimes he wants to spend time with us and we're not spending time with him because we're holding on to this and that and the other and, we, and we're too busy. Well, Lord, I'll, I'll get to you when I can. Number two, another benefit of decluttering is you find items that you need to let go of. Hard feelings. If we put God first, he'll help us order everything else in our life. 
to its proper place. Can I tell you that God doesn't have an issue with us having a hobby or a life? But if it takes place, number one, then it becomes an idol. The problem is, is that we've piled on our life so much that we don't have room enough for God and what he wants or what he wants to do in our life. We have time for everything else but God. Solomon would be a prime example of somebody that should have decluttered long before he ever did. We find that he started out on the right path. He prayed that God would give him wisdom above everything else. He prayed that God would give him an understanding mind and able to discern between good and evil. And wisdom today is the ability to discern between right and wrong. Which lets us know that right and wrong do exist and are real and that good and evil do exist. Yet in the end, somewhere along the line, Solomon becomes so bogged down with weights and with sin until it got his thinking, his focus, his forward progress hindered and shipwrecked. See, I was visiting with someone in the hospital just this week and we were talking about the Lord and one thing led to another and I said, you know what? And, and uh, uh, I, it was a brother and I said, brother, you know, what we think about, we focus on and what we focus on, we move toward. I told the church Wednesday night when I was preaching or teaching or whatever I was supposed to have been doing, anyway, I was preaching, and I, and I told them, I said, it's like your steering wheel in your car. If you don't keep both hands on it, and you don't keep moving forward, then it wants to move to the side. It'll move to one direction or another eventually. So we must keep our hands on the steering wheel. Nobody needs 700 wives and 300 concubines. Nobody. Nobody. Can I stress that again? No woman needs 700 men and 300 on the side. But the Bible tells us that eventually they turned his heart from the Lord. He had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who by the way appeared to him twice. And then he began to follow other gods. Do you understand where I'm going? Is that Solomon filled his life with things other than God. We don't have so much room here. And you'll make room either for God or for other things. And when you put God first, you can have room for other things. But what's amazing to me is that when we put everything else first, then it makes no room for God. 700 wives, 300, 1,000 ladies. And finally he turns toward idol worship. The very man that prayed that God would give him wisdom, that he would give him an understanding heart in order to be able to lead the people of God. He began to push God out of his life by making room for other things that fed his flesh. He did not keep the the Lord's command. And so as far as I'm concerned, he became cluttered, cluttered with other things rather than God. 
put his focus on other issues and subjects. And again, we have to live. There's nothing wrong with working. There's nothing wrong with making money. There's nothing wrong with being married, having a family. But all of that must take its proper place. If you put everything else ahead of God, then you'll make you'll push God out of your life. People say, well, I can handle it. No, you can't. I ain't met a man or a woman yet that could do that. When you make room for everything else other than God. <clears throat> the reason that I started out with this scripture in the book of Hebrews is because if we're not selective, then we stand to become another statistic as it regards to those who once followed the Lord. We're in a race. We're in a race. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. We're in a fight. He said, I have finished my course. I've done what the Lord would have me to do. We cannot afford to allow anything to become between us and Christ. We cannot afford to clutter our lives with everything but God. You may say, well, if you're talking to the Christian, exactly what are you referring to, Pastor? I'm glad you asked because many of us Christians today are walking around with cluttered lives. Let me just name a few without getting in trouble today. But we're cluttered with anger. Some of us are so angry, we don't even know why we're angry. We've been angry so long, we don't even know why we're angry. Some of us are carrying around strife. Surely not, Pastor. I'm just being honest. Hurt or hard feelings. Pain, hate, that's a hard word, but it's the truth. I've heard Christian, I can't stand that person. Help us, Lord. Contentions, the Bible talks about before he mentioned the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians, he mentioned the word contentions. Do you know what the word contention means? It means a spirit of war or competition which is undeniably linked to pride. Do you mean we've got people that are Christians running around full of pride? That's exactly what I mean. Again, if we don't, if we don't let God, if we don't let God cleanse us from this stuff, then it will continue to grow in our lives until it pushes God completely out of sync with our life. In the church world, we have a spirit of war or a competition. As long as I can do better than you, I'm good. As long as I can preach better than you or sing better than you or play better than you, I'm preaching. I just wish you'd help me today. As long as I can do better than you, then I'm going to be all right. But can I tell you something? That's not what the church was made for. We were made, number one, to reach the lost, but then also to edify each other. Can I tell you, we're in this thing together. We're in this thing together. We gotta make it to heaven. And I wanna take everybody that I can with me. Somebody ought to help me. I, I wanna take everybody that I can. Let's take each other by the hand and let's move forward in Jesus Christ because he's coming at an hour when we think not. Somebody help me. We're in this thing together. We're supposed to help each other. That means you take your brother and sister by the hand. Let's move forward. I'm not in competition. Bless God. There are people that can preach better than me, sing better than me, pastor better than me. That's all wonderful. You know what I tell people? I'm just enjoying doing what God has called me to do. I don't have it all together. I'm not the best at none of it. I'm just having a good time, hallelujah, serving the Lord. Praise his holy name. Can we take about five seconds and praise him? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Which leads me to another point. They say that they say that that clutter leads to stress-induced physical symptoms. In other words, it takes a toll on your body. Ain't no wonder why we got hateful Christians. Well, it's awful, ain't it? I'm just trying to help us today. How are you? I'm fine. Well, praise God. And don't ask them how they're doing. No, no. No, 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 you're going to be there for 20 minutes and by the time you leave their presence, you're depressed because they done said every bad thing about everybody around and every bad thing they got going on. And you done left there mad. You don't even know why you mad. You ever done that? Have you ever done that? I'm being for real. Have you ever done that? You leave somebody, somebody mad as fire and they, and they done blowed off about everybody in the church and, and everything that's wrong and everybody that's wrong and the preacher's wrong and you ought to see what they did, how they acted. Have you, did, have you ever noticed that? No, I ain't noticed it. Next thing you know, when you leave, you get in the car and you go down the road and you mad as fire. I'm thinking, wait a minute. Why am I mad? Ain't did nothing to me. And then you realize they done rubbed off. No, no, I can't. That, and I'm, can I tell you something? If you're not careful, that'll become a weight. See, I believe, sister. God help me. I feel what I'm preaching. But that's one of them weights that I believe the man of God or the woman of God is talking about right here. The weights Things that have no business being on you and they'll get on you and they'll weigh you down and they'll bog you down and next thing you know, you're broke, busted, disgusted, don't even know why you are. Hello, somebody. Can I tell you, you need to let it go. Hallelujah. Cast it off. Somebody ought to help me. Somebody ought to help me. I know this sounds simple today, but this is what God has given me. Jealousy. Surely you're not talking about the church. You're talking about the world or you're talking about the church next door. I'm talking about the church as a whole. Jealousy. Can I tell you the Bible says it's as cruel as the grave. The grave is pretty cruel. Yet, jealousy. And then we're so full of things like this that, that, that we have become staunch and we've become hateful, uh, divisive people. We ought to be a joy to be around. When we get around, we ought not have people dodging us. They don't went down the next aisle because they don't want to be. They don't want to be around all this. Hello, somebody. And I'm told we're all guilty. Listen, ain't nobody. Everybody's been serving God a amount of time. I'm sure I've got people now that don't want to be around me. I'm still trying to figure out why, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Jealousy. They don't want to see you do better than them. Now, they don't mind. They don't mind if God blesses you, just not more than me. They don't mind if God, but don't you dare get that position. I've been here a lot longer than you have, buddy. Weights. Selfish ambitions. Dissensions, or as, as that could be interpreted, Discord. See, if we're not careful, again, we can sow so much that we don't like somebody and we don't even know why we don't like them. Why are you? Well, I don't know. They, have you ever done it? No, they ain't never done it to me. But can I tell you what I heard? find out they don't like somebody because somebody didn't like them and they done told them about them and next thing you know it's done created a 
a, a picture in their mind of that person. And I tell you, God's not pleased. Talking about clutter, and we get our mind cluttered with all this stuff. So and so, and such and such, and that church, and that and over there, and that one, this one, and that one. And we walk around depressed, sad. God's saying, why in the world are you carrying that around? I didn't mean for you to carry that around. God is saying, I need you to clean some things out. Let me do it. I can't let go of some of that. It has to be God. But I got to acknowledge that I've got a problem. You know, I've been carrying that around a good while, Lord. Would you please help me? Lord, I've been upset with that person and they ain't even done nothing to me. Would you please help me with that? Lord, I've said some things about that one and I shouldn't have said them. Would you please forgive me and help me with that? It's like the Lord reminded me that this is what we do sometimes in our life. We hold on to stuff just because we, you know, we think we might have to have it later. I'm holding on to this anger because I might need it later. If I see them out, yeah, all it's going to take, all it's going to take is me to see them out. I'm going to give them an earful. I tell you, why don't we feel God's ear? And give it to him. He's waiting. He wants to take it. He said, hey, if you'll give that to me, if you'll give that hard feeling to me, if you'll give that emotion to me, if you'll give that jealousy to me, hey, listen, if you'll just let it go, and then I'll take, I'll take it, hallelujah, I'll do away with it, and I'll fill you with some more joy. Hello, somebody. I'll give you some more happiness. I wish somebody, would. I'll give you peace. Ain't no wonder why some people running around here ain't got no peace. It's because they're so worked up about everybody else and what everybody else is doing and everything everybody else has got going on. I don't have time for that. No, sir, I need peace in my life. I need joy in my life. I need him to give me some happiness in my life. And if I let all that go, if I get it out of my life, then he'll fill me up. He'll fill me up. We justify why we do what we do. I told them off, bless Pat, because of what they said or done, and it just made me feel good. And we justify why we do that. It's like two children when they fight. Why'd you slap her? Because she slapped me first. That just gave you a right to do it, didn't it? Why'd you pull his hair? Well, because he pulled mine first. And we as people, as, as adults, do the same thing. The Lord is saying, please give that to me. No, I tell you, I'm holding on to it. Bless, bless Pat, because they, they, they started this thing. So how do we start to disorganize the clutter? Number one, I think as an individual, you need to take a step back. Say, Lord, what, what's, what's, what's the deal? Take a step back. Analyze the situation would be another thing. Lord, show me. And you know what? Can I tell you something? The Lord will. Yeah, because sometimes it's not if you if you get into a disagreement with somebody, maybe it's not what you say, but how you said it, your attitude. God doesn't like a nasty attitude. 
or an ugly attitude or a hateful disposition. I'll never forget one time I got into a disagreement with a guy at work, David. I felt good. I told him everything I thought. Now I didn't, I didn't, I didn't cuss him out. I didn't slap him. I didn't, I didn't belittle him. This, that, and the other. I just spoke what I thought, and I felt good about it. Till sometime later, and the Lord said, "I, I need you to repent." Oh. After what he said, man, you better get out of here with that one. And the Lord said, your attitude was terrible. See, he'll do that if you'll let him. My attitude? But I'm perfect. I didn't think that. I'm just telling you sometimes that's the way we feel. So I had to go back. Took me a week, David. I sat on that thing a few days. And the more I thought about him, the matter I got during the whole time. The matter I get. Anybody ever done that? The matter I got. Finally, I said, you know, Lord, you're right. So I went back. His name was David, too. I said, David, I need to talk to you a minute. And I apologized to him for my hateful attitude and things like that. Do you know it took a lot of swallowing of the pride to do that? But it sure did please God. And that's what I want to do. I want to please God. Not please me. I want to please God. Amen. Then you got to move forward. You got to deal with one item at a time. So if you're dealing with jealousy, deal with that. Then let God help you with, and you just listen. And don't quit organizing the chaos. Before you realize it, the clutter has turned into organization. And then in the end, you will have disposed of things that you thought were important and found out that they weren't important at all. See, here's what I found. I can be right, but is it worth losing friendships over? So I'm saying today, just like your closet, your building, or your car. We need to declutter our life. Folks, Jesus is coming. And I I certainly, listen, when he when he rolls in here, I want to roll out with him. I don't want nothing to hold me back. This world is getting terrible. It's getting worse by the day. And I don't want to be left here. Hallelujah. I don't want anything to hinder me or to stop me from moving forward in him. But these weights, some of what I named as sin, jealousy, strife, you know, dissension, discord, the Bible says that that's really one thing that God hates is somebody that spreads discord. God, I don't want to hold on to that stuff. I want to get my life cluttered, uncluttered so that you can fill me more with you. How many want to be filled more of him? Would you stand with me today? I know this may have seemed elementary, but can I tell you, sometimes we need to be reminded of simple things. And I believe the, the Lord would have us to unclutter our lives today. 
You see, we cannot afford to let anything come between us and the Lord. Nobody, nothing needs to come between us. So we need to let it go. Let it go like you would those papers in that closet that's 25 years old that's no longer relevant to anything in your life or those magazines that's 30 years old that you probably didn't read to start with. You just throw them in the closet or in a drawer or those clothes that you need to get rid of, those shoes that you don't wear anymore, whatever the case be, God is saying there's some things in your life that I need you to take and give to me today. Throw them out of your life and give them to me and let me dispose of them and then help you with it. That's what God wants to do today. So I ask you with every head bowed, every eye closed, the saints of God praying, if there's anybody in this place today that you would say, Pastor, I feel like that that message was for me. I feel like that there are things in my life that I'm holding on to that I need to give unto you. I've been carrying them around so long so long and they've caused me some trouble they've caused me some heartache they've caused me some whatever and I'm so tired of carrying it around I've done it for so long I cannot do it no more I cannot do it no more it's become a problem And if I get rid of it, then you can fill that space with more of your presence. Is there anybody in this place today that you'd like to come and let me help you pray and believe God with you, that God will touch you and help you to lay aside every weight, every weight, every weight. I tell you, let me do it like this. With every head bowed and eye closed, how many would lift your hands today and say, you know what, Pastor? I need to declutter. Would you pray for me? Yes, 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 yes. There's some. Yes, 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 yes. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I stand before you right now. God, I know, Lord, that you gave me this sermon and I ask you Lord to touch your people today touch these precious people God Lord that's lifted their hands today God who have some things in their life that's cluttering their life and God they've acknowledged God and they've acknowledged the fact Lord that they need your help with it I ask you, Lord, right now, God, to reach down. God, Lord, and that you will touch them. Will you just slip up your hand and pray unto him right now? Lord, touch them, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, help them, Lord, to give that or those things unto you. God, to cast them upon you. And as your word says, Lord, you care for us. And God, touch them today. God, I pray, God, Lord, that you will begin to help them, God, today to declutter, to declutter their life, God, so that, Lord, they can receive more of you. Lord, that they can receive more of your presence, more of your working power in their life, that there'll be nothing hindering that flow There'll be nothing stopping the flow of your presence into their life every day. God, much like a pipe, God, that we have at home, God, we can become stopped up. And God, that hinders the flow 
God, I just ask you, God, to touch your people today. God, strengthen your people today. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you will touch them, lift burdens, touch hearts, bless lives today. God, I ask you in the name of Jesus to do a fresh work, God, but fresh work. Hallelujah. Will you just slip up your hands one more time and praise him? Will you praise him right now? Father, we love you today. We magnify you. We glorify you. And we bless you today, Jesus. We bless you. Kind of reminds me of Cadence last Sunday before we left, Sunday morning. She brought a bag to me, one of my bags. One of my good bags. Shall I keep, keep on? She said she had that thing, David, tied up and everything, and the, and the zipper was busted. I don't know what happened. Brother Eddie, she brought the thing, and when she brought the thing to me, it had closed, I mean, just oozing out of that bag. I don't know why it busted. So she had made, she had tied the thing together. But she'd done the same thing we do in our life. We keep stuffing, stuffing, stuffing things, hard feelings, and things in our life to the point that then it just bust. But I want more of him. I want more of him. And I tell you, I believe there are things that we've not even tapped into with him. There are blessings, hallelujah, that we've not even tapped into and he wants to give us. So, got to declutter. Look at your neighbor and say declutter. Look at somebody else and say declutter. That's what he wants us to do today and he can help us with it. You got something? I want you to invite somebody to church. That's it. I keep forgetting that every week. My wife said, you need to be telling people, invite somebody. And I tell you that if we all invited one person, we'd double overnight. If we could all bring somebody with us, we'd double overnight. Amen. Don't forget our revival coming up in a few weeks, uh, two or three weeks, uh, with Brother Garrett Marchant, Sunday through let's see, the 24th to the 27th. And then Easter is the 31st of this month. I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to believe that this is almost half the month gone. Almost half the month gone. Amen. I appreciate you today. I appreciate all that you do. Don't forget our boxes to give. Amen. We've not been taking up offering, but we've got boxes. Yes, my dear friend. Let's do that. Let's do that right now. Will you do that with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I stand before you today. Lord, I just ask you to touch Sister Stires. God, in the name of Jesus, may the healing virtue of God the stripes that you bore at Calvary flow through her body. God, in the name, we curse every pain, God, in the name of Jesus. Through your name, God, Lord, we just ask you to touch her, God, and heal her. God, move upon her body in the name of Jesus. You're able, God, and we believe you to do it right now, God. You still are on the throne. And Lord, there's nothing impossible or too hard with you. God, touch your servant today. Touch your servant today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, will you just thank him for it right now? Will you just thank him for it? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for touching Sister Stires. We thank you for touching Sister Stires right now and God for touching all of us, God, in this place today. Lord, ministering unto your people today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you glory and praise and honor. In 
Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I love you. I appreciate you today. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Don't forget to give to the box. Hallelujah. Amen.